Be sure to order your copy of the Go-Go Offense by Coach Brennan Marion on footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Coach Marion goes through the ins and outs of his explosive offense, one that's tearing up the college football field and putting a lot of points on the scoreboard. Again, you can order your copy at footballgameplan.com slash go-go offense. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. David Hassigan here with the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. Emory, it's been a fascinating HBCU season once again, and it, this time it didn't come without some chaos, but here we are, North Carolina a t versus Alcorn meeting again in the Celebration Bowl. Maybe not the two best teams from the two conferences, but the teams that certainly deserve still to be there. Well, you still have to trek through a very treacherous SWAC schedule, MIAC schedule. Both teams definitely deserve to be here. A great year for HBCU football at the FCS level. And I'm excited to see this game kick off because we have two of the premier programs, historic programs in the country, two of the more consistent programs that we've seen in the FCS regarding the HBCU rank. So it should be a great game between Alcorn and A&T. And both teams certainly had some challenges. The SWAC was very strong with both Southern and Grambling looking very good. Bethune-Cookman, FAMU, and South Carolina State were excellent in the MEAC mm -hmm. this year. But with all that said, let's take a look at how both of these teams took their path to the Celebration Bowl in 2019. For the North Carolina a t Aggies, their road to the fourth Celebration Bowl appearance was definitely one of a unique journey. In what was supposed to be a reloading year for a t losing players of the caliber of quarterback Lamar Raynard, running back Markel Cartwright, and defensive end Darrell Johnson, who actually left early for the NFL draft and was selected in the seventh round by the Buffalo Bills. a t was able to quickly reload and got off to a great start of the year to the year by knocking off Elon of the CAA. They were going to win four of their first five games with their lone loss coming at the hands of the Duke Blue Devils of the ACC. Then a few pivotal points of the season saw them take an L versus FAMU by the score of 34 to 31 and an upset loss to Morgan State in which yours truly did the color commentary for that game on ESPN3. But outside of those two losses, the Aggies took care of business in the biggest game on the back half of the schedule, which was a 22 to 20 victory over the very tough South Carolina State Bulldogs. And as a result of that win, A&T edged out South Carolina State for the MEAC title, punching their ticket to Atlanta. The road for the Alcorn State Braves was a little bit more direct than the Aggies. Alcorn dominated in conference play, only suffering the one loss to Grambling back on November the 9th by the score of 19-16. Now, outside of that game and a three-point loss to McNeese State, as well as an opening week loss to Southern Miss, the Braves pretty much handled their business on the field and more specifically on the reservation, going undefeated at home. Now, they're led by Alcorn alum head coach Fred McNair, who is in his fourth season as a head coach and his fourth time finishing first in the SWAC East Division. He brings in a Braves team that averages 32 points a game on offense, led by arguably the best player in black college football and quarterback Felix Hopper, who is also up for the Black College Hall of Fame Player of the Year award. Now, Alcorn isn't all about offense, as their defense is extremely stout versus the run and can definitely turn the ball over. Now, the latter is how they were able to punch their ticket to the Celebration Bowl as their defense stepped up big against the Southern Jaguars in the SWAC title game. All right, now that we've seen how both teams got to this point, we always expect to see at least one pro prospect from each team in this game. We've seen a lot of NFL players come out of here. So now the question is, which big players do we think we're going to see in this year's Celebration Bowl going to the NFL Draft? We'll start with North Carolina a ts wide receiver Elijah Bell, 6'1", 225. He's been on the radar for quite some time, and I think he's probably going to project better as an H-back at the next level. Think Delaney Walker type. He's a big body guy that does go up and get the football, but I think his speed is best suited to play inside as a bigger slot receiver or as an H-back. You also look at the offensive lineman Marcus Pettiford. I was on that broadcast against Morgan State. So came away very impressed with the athleticism of Pettiford and what he can do in a run game out there on the move so he does give you some creativity and if you can envision him growing to about 300 plus pounds I don't think he'll lose that athleticism so he's definitely a sleeper in this draft class for North Carolina A&T now as we move on to Alcorn State you look in the backfield Deshaun Waller another one of these guys has been on the radar for quite some time last year he was dynamic in what he did on the ground running the football really well had a big game against Southern in last year's SWAC championship game. Now, he dealt with some minor injuries this year, but he's still on pace to do what he does best, and that's pick up yards in chunks. 
Another offensive player to keep an eye on for all corn state is wide receiver Chris Blair, 6'3", 200 pounds, a long, easy strider, does a great job in stacking defensive backs. He tracks the football really well and doesn't mind sacrificing his body over the middle of the field or deep down the field for a reception. So he's another one of these big body receivers that can play outside or even inside as a bigger slot. Now moving on to the defensive side of the football, Solomon Muhammad, the outstanding linebacker for the Braves, is he's a guy that has great sideline to sideline speed. You see him routinely running down these athletic quarterbacks in the swag going toward the sideline, getting guys pushed out of bounds or even making a play at the point of attack. So he's a Big time playmaker, has been a very productive player over the course of his career for all Corn State. And on the perimeter, I do like what I see out of cornerback Torrance Wilson. He's a pick six machine. He had one last year uh, against Jackson State, had one this year more recently against Southern in the SWAC championship game. He's a big, tall corner that just seems to find the football. And once he gets the ball in his hands, he knows what to do with it. He brings it back for touchdowns, has four interceptions on the season. All right, Emery, let's break down this matchup now. Let's go for it in depth for A&T. They got to be pleased that FAMU decided that this year they would have their sanctions on them to keep them out of postseason play. That means they get back into the Celebration Bowl. A&T, we know they've been dominated for the last few years. This year, though, it's a little bit different team, a little bit different offense. We're a little bit unsure with what to expect game to game from them. But the third down play has really been where it's been key for them all season long. That's where they're going to have to win in this ball game, in my opinion. Third down offense and third down defense are going to be huge. Can they sustain drives against this very tough all-corn state defense? Can they get off the field against one of the more potent offenses in the FCS in all-corn state? If they can win third downs on both sides of the ball, I think it puts them in great position to win this ball game. You also look at another point in this matchup, the special teams aspect it will be huge. I think a and has one of the better special teams in the MEAC, also in the HBCU ranks. I love what they do, kicking the ball. They do a great job in coverage. They have a really good returner. I think that's an issue where they can get some cheap points, maybe get some great field position, put their defense in a situation where they can get off the field on third down. So special teams, I think, can help them out, not only on offense, but also more, and more so on defense. And you look at the perimeter. They have great talent out there on the perimeter. Mac McCain, the outstanding corner has to make plays on his side of the ball. You look at the offensive side of football, they have great talent at receiver as well. You talk about their big time playmaker uh, out there wide out, he has to make plays out there on the perimeter. So if they can win on the perimeter, that's gonna be huge for them. Elijah Bell is a receiver that they have that's doing a great job going down the field. He's their big play threat in the passing game. Winning on a perimeter is going to be key for a t in this ballgame. Let's talk about Alcorn, though. They had to fight off a very tough SWAC East this year. Pretty much the entire state of Alabama was coming after this right, program. Right, right, right. But they have been solid and probably the most consistent team this decade in terms of the entire HBCU picture. Alcorn this year, again, very, very consistent. What are we looking for in this game from them? Well, what I like about a ts defense is that they tighten up inside the red zone. So if you're Alcorn... Winning inside the red zone against a very tough defense is going to be huge. You have to come away with points. And a lot of times, normally you'll say, okay, if it's three or seven, just come away with points. But I think in this case, it has to be touchdowns. There are going to be some opportunities to make some plays on the ground inside the red zone against this Aggie defense. But if they can win inside the red zone coming away with touchdowns, it helps them out along the way to try to win this ballgame defensively. Khalil Carter is a solid quarterback for a and but I think if they're going to disrupt the pocket and disrupt that passing game and not allow him to have success out there on the perimeter, it's about delayed pressure. Maybe some green dog blitzes. What I mean by that is if the running back goes out in the pattern, then you send a guy in. If a running back uh, stays in, okay, then you drop an extra guy back in coverage. But delayed pressure, sometimes they want to go another way if the running back stays in. You blitz. If he goes out, you cover. But I think they have to do it a little bit in, in, in the inverse situation where if the guy goes out, send that free blitzer, make him make a quick decision, rally up, make the tackle. But they have to find ways to delay pressure against Carter, force him into quick decisions throwing the football. And lastly, clean game. No penalties, no turnovers. You can't beat yourself against one of the better teams in the MEAC and a and If they can play mistake-free football, I know that goes without say, but if they can do that, then the Braves will be playing winning football in the Celebration Bowl. And this is a game where a and has been the dominant force in the Celebration Bowl. But now there's always a question of, there's always key players, and then there's the X-Factors. So let's take a look at who the X-Factors will be in the 2019 Celebration Bowl. The biggest X-Factor for North Carolina a and in this ballgame will come from their quarterback, 
Khalil Carter. I'm a big fan of what he does in the run game. I love his athleticism, but it's going to be in the passing game where he's going to have to be the X factor. I think he sees the field extremely well. It's just about arm strength and getting the football there on time to where his guy and only his guy can make a play. So if he plays well in the passing game, I don't see how North Carolina a and can be beat. Looking at the other side of the field, I think the offensive line for all corn state will have to be the biggest X factors in this game. Now, this is a unit that has been outstanding all season long. They've spearheaded their run game and what they do on the ground. They've also done a great job in moving the pocket for Felix Harper, their talented left-handed QB. So when they move the pocket, these big guys are doing a great job of getting out there and making sure they're protecting him very well. But in this matchup against North Carolina ANT's lighter, more explosive, more athletic defensive front, it's going to be a challenge for those big mammoth guys up front to get a hand on those shorter, quicker, explosive defensive linemen of a &T. So it's going to be important that their offensive line play well, bring their A game, their A-plus game, because they're facing one of the more talented and scheme-diverse units up front in a &T. So this offensive line of, a of all corn plays well, and I think the Braves can do a great job in dominating the point of attack. I think that the main reason to choose HBCU is for the family atmosphere. The guys are going to get the, the core values that, that, that their parents taught them, that their family members try to raise them. You'll have a close-knit atmosphere. You'll actually have guys that care about you as a person. So I think that's the main reason for choosing the HBCU. Emory, a year of hard work has brought these two teams to the Celebration Bowl once again. Now the big question, who will win it and why? I love all Corn State in this ball game. I think when you look at all things being equal, point of attack play, great defense, both teams have that. We're going to see great offensive lines. We're going to see uh, stellar defensive play for both teams. The X factor, quarterback play. You talk about Felix Harper, the outstanding quarterback, the lefty, doing a lot of Kyle Murray type things in the pocket for all corner state. I think he's going to be the reason why they win this ball game. A guy that can extend the play, work touchdown to check down, also create opportunities with his legs, and also helps out their running game as well. I think Harper may even be the winner of the Black College Football Player of the Year Award when it's all said and done because this guy is tremendous. I think he will be the reason why the Braves take home the celebration bowl, which will be the second for the SWAC uh, since its inception back uh, what, four years ago uh, out there in uh, the Celebration Bowl. See, I'm going to disagree with you. I think a and brings this one home, and the big reason why, X-Factor Jermaine Martin. This kid is stellar. This is the one question mark we had in this a and offense. Who's going to take over at the running back position? And Martin has done a tremendous job at filling in there. I think he's a game-breaker. Alcorn State has a great stable of backs that they can turn to, but Martin, I think, is the one guy that you, can, you really can't account for in this offense. I think he's the difference. I think it's a close game. a and thrills, you know, thrills and thrives in close ball games. I think a and gets the job done but a very, very slim margin. Should be fun, man. Should be a fun game to watch. I'm glad that uh, this game kicks off bowl season and one of those matchups where people will talk about this down the line. This is, I don't want to say a rubber match because Alcorn hasn't beaten a and yet in the Celebration Bowl, but this could be an opportunity where it could put the SWAC on the right trajectory moving forward. It's going to be a huge one to be sure, and you can watch this game. This will be on ABC at noon this upcoming Saturday, one of the first of many bowl games that day, but they're choosing one of the best ones of the year to start things off, so we hope that you tune in. That'll do it here for FootballGamePlan.com. For the Czar of the Playbook, Emery Hunt, I'm David Hassagan. Thanks for watching and enjoy the game.